Hello and welcome back to Stone Magpie for the cancer segment of this diamond painting. That means it's cancer season. Happy birthday to all the cancers out there. If you were born between the 20th of June and the 21st of July, you are a cancer star sign. Of course, we all have a mix of star signs within our natal chart. So if you were born either side of those dates, you may well fall into the star sign either side of Cancer. So the best way to find out is to go on a free online website and download your birth chart. I like cafeastrology.com. There are lots of different free websites to do that on, however. So choose your favourite and you'll find out the planetary positions of your own personal birth chart. Cancers, it's all about you today and I've been doing my fact finding and finding out all about what you like and what sort of people you are and all sorts of different things, including what your gemstones are, um, your personality traits, what you like to do as hobbies, what you like or would probably end up doing as a career, all sorts of different facts to share with you during this diamond painting. Talking about the diamond painting first, this is a canvas from Spell Queen. It is the Zodiac Circle and um, we have already completed the previous months starting with Aries. So this is the next segment along. This canvas is a 50 by 50 and I always say that I would probably buy a bigger one for more detail. This one is fine for our videos, but if you wanted a bit more detail, then do go bigger. This will give you a good idea what a 50 by 50 would look like when completed. If you've never bought from Spell Queen before, there is an affiliated link in the description box below and that will allow you some discount on your first purchase if you follow that link. So please do look at that if you are intending to purchase through Spell Queen. They are lovely kits. Okay, so I am at the moment just working on the background of this diamond painting, just around these dark areas. During these videos, I tend to do just the detail of the star sign and then I'm hoping to complete the gaps at another time. So you will see me completing your segment, which is, of course, a crab, because that is the sign for cancer, is a crab. And we'll find out all about why during this video. So you can see there, the crab is sitting there with his pincers. Now, if you hear the word cancer st uh, star sign, you will probably immediately think crabby. <laughs> but we are going to talk about that a bit today because I think cancers get a bit of a hard rap on that. Cancers are very emotional creatures. Cancers are ruled by the moon and the moon is the most emotional planet in our galaxy. So don't be too harsh with our cancers over there because they have this protective shell, of course. If you think of a crab. Um, they have this protective shell because they are very emotional people. So when you first meet a cancer, you will probably feel that they are quite guarded and protective, a bit hard-nosed and, you know, protective of themselves and their loved ones. However, once a cancer knows you better, they will open up emotionally and you will see their soft inner. So 
So if you think of a, let's say a hard biscuit, <laughs> once you've bitten through that hard layer, you will find the soft squidginess inside. <laughs> and that is the true Cancerian. So once you've got through that hard layer, when you first meet a Cancerian, and you've gained their trust and the trust is established, they will open up a lot more and you will see the charismatic side of the Cancer because they are very charming. And they also gift the world with amazing humour. Once they trust you and they open up and they show their true side, then... Um, they will keep you amused for hours. <laughs> they are a very humorous sign. And as I say, very charming, charismatic. You've just got to gain that trust first. And that can take a bit of time because you just need to edge the crab out of its shell, show support. Cancers love to surround themselves with very supportive people. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they want everybody to agree with them at all times and do exactly what they want you to do. But, you know, the support aspect is very, very important for a Cancerian. So perhaps if they are heading into some sort of issue that you can see and they're a bit blind to, they would appreciate being told gently about that in a supportive way. They may well then clam up into their shell for a while. However, it's only to assess the situation before popping their head out again and carrying on. They are a very resilient sign. I just missed one of these symbols there. Pop that in and we'll move on to number two symbol. So cancers are very warm people. As I say, once that you've gained that trust, they are very, very protective of the people that they care about. And um, yeah, they're very warm. They are likely not to show a lot of emotion, but they feel very deeply. And once they've got past the getting to know you stage, they open up more and more and you will see the true cancer person behind the outer shell. The moon is a maternal feminine planet. Well, it's not really a planet, it's a moon. <laughs> Um, but it is a maternal feminine energy. So the softness of even in a cancer male, the softness will come from that moon placement. They are ruled by feminine maternal energies. And that's why once they know they can trust you, you've gained that, they feel comfortable, um, they will open up the emotions and the emotions can flow strongly in a cancer sign. And that will be usually lifelong. Once you've gained that trust, it will last. Cancers do have a longevity in their feelings. So if you've just met a Cancer, just take your time, be patient and they eventually will open up 
once you've shown them that support and that they can trust you completely. Cancers are a very reliable sign. They are able to ride out change. They are able to problem solve really efficiently. Nothing gets to a cancer. They feel that no problems are unresolvable. They find that to think about what the issue is, that anything can be resolved with a little bit of thought behind it. So a very, very resilient star sign. They come out pretty unscathed from problems that they face. and are the masters of resolutions to those problems. So that's an amazing gift. They may need to go into their shell to think through the problem and um, be able to master that solution. So if that's the case, need to give them their space to do so. but you can be pretty confident that they'll come up with something. I think that's a really fabulous trait to have because um, you know, if, if people are faced with problems, sometimes it is that resilience that can get people through issues. And cancers having that ability and that gift to think through things and come up with perhaps out of the box solutions and, and things like that, that is superb. A really fabulous thing to have in your birth chart. Being an air sign, I sort of, float about and worry about stuff <laughs> whereas the cancer sign um, is more straightforward than that it is a water sign so emotions run deep um, and their overall saying is I feel and that goes back to you know don't be fooled by this outer layer they feel very deeply but um, to be able to logically think through a solution to problems in that manner, yeah, I respect that. I wish I had a bit of that myself, so... Um... <laughs> Hats off to cancers there. So, yes, once you've... Um crack the outer shell of a cancer. They are very emotional, compassionate partners to have in life and are very, very loyal. The emotion runs deep. They can be quite intense, very intuitive and compassionate. They are emotionally deep and if cancer knows the secrets and they can keep them to themselves they are excellent secret keepers so if you need to share any news and talk things through and you know a cancer very well then they are probably the people that will be able to keep your secrets and help you through your problems. Very compassionate. If you think of the moon phases, they can sort of, um, how can I put it? Sort of, I want to say ebb and wane, but I know ebb's not the right word for it. But um, yes, there are different stages of the moon. So cancers have that. 
of that, um, I'm not going to say mood swing because that's wrong. Their sort of mood changes as the as the moon revolves. Um, I don't think I've explained that very well. If you're confused by that, then please do look it up because um, it's kind of, you know, like waves in the sea are dictated by the moon phases. It's a bit like that with the Cancer. The... Um, the Cancer's rationale and emotion can play a bit of tug of war with each other. And um, I will I will sort of mention now a little bit about, I'm not going to say the negative traits, but it's the one that really Cancer's are renowned for, their crabbiness, a bit of grumpiness. And having this tug of war going on within themselves and also having that protective shell on just means that sometimes they go into overprotectiveness of themselves and the ones they love. And they will snap with those pincers of theirs and be a bit grumpy. Um, but if they do that, sometimes they then, if you imagine a crab, oh, I'm trying to explain it really carefully and so that you understand it's not that cancers are always grumpy and things like that. They get a bit of a bad rap for that. But if something happens with their loved one or themselves and they snap and have a little, you know, then they will withdraw back into themselves and ponder it because they are such an emotional sign. And then they will tend to overcome it and come back out of their shell again. So this tug of war that they've got between this emotion and rationale means that it can lead to fear and a bit of agitation within themselves. So, as I say, if lots of supportive people are around the cancer then that's a help with that um, it can lead to a little bit of anxiety um, in which case you know cancers can overeat through anxiety stress um, so this withdrawal and overeating just if you're with a cancer just watch out for that and show your support while they go through it and um, and try not to worry too much because as I say they're a very resilient sign and they will come up with the solution and then pop back out and um, off they go again. So we can see on the diamond painting here that the moon is depicted. And I'm not sure if that's a, oh, it's a waxing or a waning moon, isn't it? That's the word. Um, that I was looking for earlier and I'm not sure if this moon is a waxing or a waning <laughs> it's a half moon and um, we're getting on to the crab now with his pincers and it's probably an ideal time to talk about the physicalities of a cancer as we do this bit. So if you think of the cancer shape, cancerians can have round body shape, so like the shell, a round body shape with average height. Um, that could be a little bit to do with the overeating with anxiety as well, but 
It's, it doesn't mean to say that Cancerians are obese. It's just their body shape is, is um, inclined to be rounded. They also can have a firm chin, a small nose and protruding eyes. So that is the typical cancer physicality. If you are a cancer and you're looking at yourself thinking, well, that doesn't really describe me, have a look at the other aspects in your chart because it may well be that you have the physicalities of another star sign within your chart. The main um, placements to look at is your rising sign or your ascendant sign or your moon sign. They, the star sign, which can be called the sun sign, your rising sign and your moon sign are the three main planetary positions in your birth chart. So they tend to be the ones that if you're getting a zodiac reading, astrology chart, um, they're the ones that you tend to look at the most to get a full reading. And that includes tarot as well, actually look at all three of those to get a bigger picture. So that's how the astrology is made up. So some people think that, oh well, everybody in the cancer can't be the same. Well, no, we're, we're not all the same. Even, you know, I'm a Libra. Not all Libras will be exactly like me because I've got a mix of other star signs within my birth chart. So that's how the science of it works. You can see his pincers there and his little dangly legs. <laughs> right, let's do the tea, do the shell that he might go and hide in at any moment if we're not careful. <laughs> So once I have done the majority of the crab, I will be speeding up the background and then coming back to you with other facts about the cancer star sign. I know that um, I've had comments about how people are enjoying this series and I'm so pleased you are. I am learning a lot. Um, I don't know a lot about every star sign, so I'm having to research a little bit before each video. And yeah, I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying having the research going on and trying to find out some facts about people. So I'm really pleased that you're enjoying it too and that you're enjoying seeing this canvas as well. I really like the way that these pictures are depicted. And if I wasn't doing this for a video, then I would love to get bigger one. But this segment size is perfect for a video. I'm trying to get them through to be about an hour long each. So we've still got lots to talk about. We've still got what gemstones, um, what hobbies, what career choice for cancer. So still lots to find out about our cancer friends. Okay, so let's have a little look and see what is next. Yes, yeah, so because cancers are so reliable and um, feel deeply, really trust people that they have close, you know, having that affirmation, as it were, of the people that they know well and that supportiveness, it probably won't surprise you that the cancer sign is very homely. 
They like to be at home. They like to have their things around them. They like mementos of the past around them too, but they don't live in the past. It's not like they're dwelling on things that have happened. They just like little reminders of things um, that probably made them feel good in the past. So perhaps if they've been on holiday, bringing back a memento of that holiday and having it on display so that they remember the lovely times. You know, that lovely emotional side coming out within their home life. They are very happy to be at home. I wonder whether any Cancer men's, men out there have little men caves to retreat to at home. <laughs> if you're a Cancer man or you are with a Cancer man, please do let me know if they need their little man cave, you know, the shed or a spare room, something like that that they need to retreat to occasionally to do all of this problem solving. <laughs> I don't think you necessarily need to be a cancer male to have that. <laughs> but it would be interesting how many of them do. Yeah, let me know for my own amusement there. I don't know if I've explained already this video that when I do um, the segment, I leave these side bits. I might try and get this bit done here, but I tend to focus on the main segment during the videos. So it depends on the time that we have allowing. So we can see there are details in his shell. I think I'm a bit close to see that up front at the moment, um, but hopefully you can see it a bit better than me. Yeah, so because cancers are very intuitive and great problem solvers, that doesn't necessarily mean that they sit and wait. If they've, if they've sensed danger, um, well, you can imagine a crab on a beach with this. If they sense danger, they won't just sit there. They will move. They don't just wait for the next tide. They move. So your cancer person or yourself if you are a cancer yourself you will move forward with problems if you sense anything like that you don't just sit on it you might withdraw um, but you don't stop still So as I'm working on the canvas, let's talk gemstones um, because here is your gemstone depicted and what I found out, sorry about that, what I found out since the last video was that the gemstones can cross over the months. So with cancer being from the 20th of June to the 20th of July, then it crosses over into two different gemstones. So for Cancer, you have pearl or ruby, depending if you are June or July. So they've depicted the pearl in this on this canvas. A lot of people would say ruby. So I'm thinking that Spell Queen have depicted the gemstones for the first month of that sign rather than the main gemstone. So basically you could take a choice really. They are very different, the pearl and the ruby. Of course, the pearl has beautiful pearlescence around it with lots of different shimmery colors. If you're lucky and have a beautiful pearl, there are lots of colors, not within the stone, but around on the pearlescence on the outer coating of a pearl because as we know pearls are made by oysters and they are 
forming this hard layer around the part of the grit or sand that's got into them and it's agitated to make the gemstone and that is the pearlescence. The ruby is a very, as you imagine, red stone. <laughs> it is part of the sapphire family but it's, it's a red sapphire so it's called a ruby. So we'll focus on the pearl because that is what's on the canvas. Okay, let's do the little question marks. There are other gemstones that are good healing stones for Cancerians and I'll tell you about those in a moment. crystals or gemstones for cancers are emerald that's a nice one isn't it with that beautiful green um, emerald citrine now citrine I know that is really good for it's like the happy stone citrine it's the sunshine stone so citrine is one for you and green calcite Gosh, you've got a lot of green stones. Now, I'm surprised that you don't have more blue stones being a water sign, but no, green calcite is another good one for you. Selenite, I don't really know a lot about selenite. Um, carnelian, now carnelian is an orange, orangey red gemstone. So I suppose being part ruby is your birthstone, yeah, selenite. I think that's good for creativity, if I remember rightly. And um, Cancer is a very creative star sign, which we will move on to a bit later on when it comes to hobbies, etc. Um, another one, Chalcedony. Now, Chalcedony is another greenish gemstone. I am really surprised. I suppose mm, Chalcedony could have a bluish tinge. It's like an opaque sea green. So yeah, okay, yeah, Chalcedony. Rose Quartz. Now Rose Quartz is a pink stone, as you can imagine with the name Rose in it. But it's that's really good for friendship. So I think that's where the friendship side comes in and the trust, etc., that we spoke about earlier. Another one, and I am not surprised by this at all, is Moonstone. Yeah, now that makes a lot of sense. A Moonstone is a beautiful stone. It can be, it can be different colours, but tends to be white with this beautiful glow about it. I can absolutely see why that would be a Cancer's gemstone. Definitely. I don't know what the properties of a moonstone is, but um, yeah. So if you're interested in looking up what they can do for you, if you are a Cancer, then please do feel free. Let me know in the comments below as well if you have got some of these healing stones and um, whether you carry them about with you or have them on your windowsill, etc. Let me know if you believe in the crystal healing aspects. All right, well, I can see that one bright symbol there. And it's an orangey colour. Talking about the orange of the carnelian. <laughs> I think that might be the tip of the pincer, if I'm not mistaken. Then we've got these zeros, which look very bright green. Mm, talking about the green gemstones, that makes sense, doesn't it? But I suppose it is sort of a watery... Oh, you know, when you're on holiday with those aqua, bright, beautiful waters. Mm. Oh, it's making me feel like going on holiday. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? 
maybe on a tropical island. See the crabs in the water there. So I am going to think about what I am. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is finish off these zeros, then speed up the video to get some of this background in, and then come back to you and talk about um, hobbies and career and perhaps what the cancer child is like as well. We'll see if we've got time for that. I'm sure I'll squeeze it in for you. So in the meantime, let's speed up. Okay, so that is the background pretty much completed. So we will now go on to the main body again of the diamond painting while we talk about the cancer child. Now, if you have a cancer child or indeed you were a cancer child, you may well recognize this when I say cancer children can be daydreamers. They don't need a lot of socialisation. They're quite happy on their own, daydreaming away. And um, I'm going to say they can be quite moody. But if you give your cancer child lots of reassurance and um, let them know that you're supporting them and that you're there for them, that can help with that moodiness. If you think about the emotional side and the trust side, of course your cancer child will trust you, um, but just that bit of reassurance will help. Um, now, they may well be dreamers and um, they can create their own imaginary world out of anything. Um, and that is not lost, that is a really, good trait to build on for the future. So don't be worried if your cancer child doesn't want to socialise and are quite happy daydream daydreaming away in their own bedroom. That is probably their safe space and um, they will emerge. <laughs> so it might take a little bit of parental um, initiative really to get a cancer child to communicate. Um, so again, a bit of reassurance and that will, that will help there. As we spoke earlier, um, cancerians are very homely. So they like to build their nests at home and that goes for every cancerian, not just the cancerian child. So, you know, with their little mementos and objects around them, creating that safe space. Of course, with that um, humour that Cancerians have got, um, that's a great so socialisation trick to make people laugh and have that humour aside. So... Now, when it comes to hobbies of a Cancerian, um, Cancerians are so giving that great 
hobbies you may not even think of as hobbies. So fundraisers they may like to get involved in, things that will help others out. So maybe litter picking, um, like I say, fundraisers, jumble sales, things like that can be great hobbies for a Cancerian. Think what can help others out. So that is very giving. Maybe um, community spirited endeavors. Think of um, like a charity dinner or um, volunteering in a charity shop. You know, in the UK, we have like the charity shops where people give their goods and then if you buy them, the money raised goes to the charity. So perhaps volunteering in one of those could be a nice hobby for a Cancerian. Maybe shopping for the elderly neighbour or taking them out for the day. Also, um, Cancerians are very arty. I touched on this a little bit earlier. So may want to be involved in the arts or visiting galleries and things like that. So that's also a nice hobby for a Cancerian. If you're thinking of purchasing a gift for a Cancerian, they love handmade, you know, um, homemade gifts that you've put lots of thought and effort into. Go down a treat with Cancerians. They really do appreciate those types of gifts, whether that be um, sort of a painting or jam making, um, things that show a bit of effort. They don't like a lot of last minute type gifts where they can tell straight away that you've just picked up something quick from the store. Um, you know, so something, or even a beautiful card that you've handmade. Um, I once gave one of the printouts of a birth chart to a Cancerian and they were so touched by that. So that might be another idea for you too. Um, now, careers wise, careers wise, anything in the arts is a good career for a Cancerian. They tend to prefer um, long-term endeavors rather than money-making ideas that could be quite short-term. So long-term goals. Um, also, because they are so caring, things like human services, so HR in the workplace, for example, education, passing on their knowledge to the young is a, another really lovely career for a Cancerian. Also, because of the caring nature, they really like animals. So veterinarian and um, pets wise, any animals could be a good pet for a Cancerian. They really are caring by nature. So I hope that you've really enjoyed your segment in the Zodiac Circle. I've been really thrilled to share my knowledge with you and I'll show you a view from further away. Hello dear Cancers, here is your completed segment in the Zodiac Circle. You can see the banner here, which is supposed to say Cancer Across. Again, if the canvas was bigger, we'd see that in much more detail. We can see the moon really clearly in this circle here, going down to the crab with his hard shell and the pincers and the legs, really cute. And going further down, I didn't mention the flowers that are um, a symbol for cancer. And 
It said in my notes, Larkspur, but they look more like lilies. So I'm not sure what Larkspur looks like. Maybe it is Larkspur, I'm not sure. <laughs> and here is your gemstone, which is depicted as the pearl in this canvas. And a reminder, it could be the ruby. So I really hope that you've enjoyed hearing all about cancer in this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you next time. In the meantime, enjoy your own diamond painting. Take care.